Hello and welcome to Motors for the Masses and today I want to talk about my daily driver that I've owned now for eight months. So let's roll the intro and get cracking. As you know, I've never been one for owning a car that everybody else has. So what have I got? Well, it is a 2000 Audi A8 2.8 V6 Auto Sport. You might well be asking yourself why. Well, I love retro, long, sleek, luxurious, not very expensive, but used to be expensive cars. And that's exactly what this is. So let's take a closer look and take it for a drive. But first of all, I want to address as to why between these age-related stone chips on the bumper, I have a V8 number plate on it. No, it's not a V8, and if I had a V6 number plate, I'd be putting that on it. However, this plate used to be on my 06 Mustang, which was a V8. And rather than it just sit there on retention, which it has done for the last seven years, I thought, I don't want to lose it, I'd rather use it. That rhymes. So I put it on this. So there you go. That's the story behind that. However, I shall bring you in for a closer look and show you the stone chips because from that distance, you can't really see them, but it has them. And there they are. Many of them. No, I didn't put the S-line surround on either. That was already on the car when I got it. I also didn't tint the windows. Now, I quite like them because I like dark tint windows and they are legal and these ones are not as dark as the rear ones. However, the rear ones have a purple tint and my son Patrick hates that because from the inside it said it looks awful looking out through the window. I don't mind it. I did try and remove it, but because it's been on there some years, it's a bit flaky. And I tried one little bit on the other side because it's also starting to separate at certain places. And the other side has got a piece missing now, but never mind. But I like them. And from six foot, they look awesome. You can't see any marks whatsoever. <laughs> see, this rear one looks great. This passenger one starting to separate here. Look, you can see down there, there's a line and a bubble there. Now, I could get them taken off and redone, but again, when I tell you how much I paid for the car, you'll realise why I'm not doing much with it. The back one's not too bad at all. You've got a couple of dots here where it's starting to go on the heat lines and a tiny little bit here, but that's it. Mostly, it's okay. The driver's side is where it's worse. The driver's door is fine, but the rear door here, look, it's got a bit there, bit there, and then a line here. And here is where, see look, dark, 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 dark. There it is, that's the bit I took off there. And it flaked really horribly, so I just left the rest. When it's shut, you can't really notice it. So let's take a look at that Nota V8 engine, which develops 193 horsepower and 206 pounds foot of torque. Nota 60 time, when new, was nine and a half seconds with a top speed of 145 miles an hour. Now, I think it's pretty clean and I don't really clean it. I wipe over it occasionally, that's about it. So it's a pretty clean engine. And all I've had to do to the car so far is, what do I have to do? Oh yeah, um, the suspension arm. And that's it so far, fingers crossed. And I have noticed that my coolant is slightly low. But this is a teachable moment, that's why I left it like that, to show you to check your engine bay regularly. Check your oil and check your coolant. Don't go away with that. Okay, well, there was one other thing I had to do, and that was because I didn't like what it came with wheel-wise. Now, it came with these 16-inch sport wheels, pictured here. However, as I always do, I got rid of those and got these Proline Audi 19-inch wheels with 255 tyres. And I think they look absolutely awesome. 
I think it really just finishes the car off. I love the look of these wheels against the original. The original just looked too small. So let's take a little look inside. Well, door shut beautifully, as you would expect. Now this comes with the um, multimedia system. You have got climate control, but you don't get aircon, which is weird because it comes with a cassette player, which is now my MP3 player through a cassette with a wire, MP3 and a six CD changer in the back. Uh, you've got cruise control, you've got electric windows, you've got electric mirrors, you've got electric seats, you've got electric sunroof, you've got the auto tint mirror, um, the auto tint side mirrors as well, but I did replace those because they'd gone burnt and a bit brown. You couldn't really see out of them. So I've replaced them with heated mirrors, which it has heated mirrors, so, but they're not the tint of the auto tint ones. I didn't want to put that back on because they were stupid prices. So I thought, nope, I'll leave that. Um, you have got a little menu button in here and like a little heated metal um, tray for your coffee in there and two in the back also. Um, you've got, uh, also, I would like to say multi-function steering wheel, but that's basically volume up and down and station up and down, that's about it. Um, front and rear fog lights. Um, in here, you've got a couple of little cubbies, great for holding your card holder and uh, uh, gummy bears and cassettes, obviously. Perfect, actually, perfect for cassettes. I know that's not in its case and it should be. Naughty me. Um, ashtray with not a 12 volt supply, a cigarette lighter. I'll have you know, <laughs> of course, being a 2000 car where you weren't uh, worried about offending people by using the word cigarette. Anyway, um, yes, the sunroof I love because you turn that and it just goes so smooth and so quiet. Um, the engine as well from within here, very quiet indeed. Now what I'm gonna do is start the car up, bearing in mind that door is wide open. I'm gonna start the car up and you can hear just how quiet it is, even though it's done 130,000 miles and it's 23 years old. Key would be handy, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's not a push button start. I could pretend. Are you ready? I mean, come on. How quiet is that? That is impressive. I mean, the, the loudest thing in here is the fan. Um, oh, hello, I've got these everywhere. Ladybirds, <laughs> off you go. Um, and a warning symbol because the door's open. I'm aware, thank you. Uh, however, yeah, it's great. Now, there are a couple of issues. Um, some of the numbers are starting to go on the dash. Um, and when it gets hot, they get fainter. But it's only mileage and the clock, so it doesn't really matter because you get clock from your phone and mileage, well, I know what that is. Sometimes it comes on when it's cold. So once it has the MOT, you can tell. I mean, at the moment it's done 132,023 miles. 133,023 miles. There you go, easy to tell. But yeah, I mean, look, listen to it. It's quiet as anything, and I'll take you outside with the engine run, and you can see how quiet it is out there also. I mean, what I'm going to do is close this door and go around the other side and get in the car with all the doors closed, and you can hear just how quiet it is. Isn't that amazing? Even when you rev it. Ooh, a nice little V6 burble. Other than that, very quiet. And when you pull away gently, it is very quiet. But we'll demonstrate that in a moment. First of all, let me show you the back. Now, this car is in pretty decent condition all around. Now, sitting in the back here, the seat is where I would have it as a driver. And it is so comfortable. I've got lots of leg room. Um, you don't really get anything other than a cigarette lighter, 
stroke 12 volt supply. Um, it is big enough for three adults, however, in here you've got a nice little drinks warmer and a Maram holder. Thanks, Patrick. Um, <laughs> But it has a little first aid symbol. That one on that side? Yes, for your first aid kit. And a little cubby hole through to the boot if you want to. Love that. Nice, soft leather that isn't really worn at all. It's lovely quality and I'm really pleased with the condition of this car. And again, I shall close this door and you can hear just how nice it, it closes. Are you ready? Nice and gentle. Oh, ho, 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 ho. quality. Now, the boot on these are also quite luxurious. Oh, it's got rear parking sensors as well, by the way. Um, despite having stuff in it, 525 litres of space, going all the way back there. Oh, just touch the back there. Um, you've got your battery under here, which is mammoth, and then your six CD changer in there. Um, Obviously you've got your, your carpet floor and then your spare wheel under there, which is a proper wheel, obviously, because it's from 2000. However, the boot shuts great. You do also get a triangle in here as well, look, and it does still have it in this vehicle. Close the boot nice and gently. Lovely. Front parking sensors too. Being the sport model, it does come with the huge red calipers. Now I do want to point out the scuff marks on the wheels. That wasn't me because I bought these wheels second hand and they were cheap because they had a few scuff marks. So then let's go for a drive and I shall show you how that ABS and that independent multi-link suspension handles in this car. Beautiful. So here we are inside and I have to say I don't even have to speak very loudly to be heard because it is very quiet in here. Now this is an automatic with a Tiptronic gearbox so you can change manually if you want to. Um, I am on an extremely bumpy road with people pulling out on me left, right and centre going past a holiday camp so they're all idiots. No they're not, but that one is. Anyway. Well done, mate. Um, so yes, I'm on an extremely bumpy road um, and it just absorbs it so nice. That suspension is lovely. Independent, multi-link suspension, as I say. Very, very nice, very smooth. It certainly does feel luxurious. Even now, 23 years later, it feels great. And I did have to change that bottom arm because I had a, a tiny clunk when I first got it and it turned out to be the rubber bushing had gone. Um, however, it holds the road so well. It glides really nicely. The steering is light. There's nothing about the ride I don't like. The seats are unbelievably comfortable. They're, they're not massage seats, but they are very plush leather, very nice, thick leather, shall we say. Um, and in a minute, I'll take you on the dual carriageway and you can see just how smooth it feels. Um, I, I can't get over what a bargain this car actually is. I really can't. No, he's going that way, so I'm going this way. Um, things I like and don't like, I'll talk about in a second. However, I do want to address everything else in here. now. Modern day cars are luxurious. Even, I suppose you could say, cheaper, smaller cars tend to have, I would I want to say leather, which is sort of leatherette. Um, a lot of the electric vehicles are going for the eco leather, which is like faux hide and stuff like that. Um, 
there's a speed bump here. And I shall take this speed bump and you can see how it glides over it. What speed bump? <laughs> I do get a clicking. Um, I think there's something with the uh, vents. Every now and then, it's like they want to try and move. I don't know if it's got it, because it's got it on that low setting. I don't know what that is, but it goes click, click, click. If anybody knows, please let me know in the comment section below, because I'd like to know what that is. Now, bearing in mind as well, these are on 45 profile tires, so they're not very thick at all. I've got no rubber between the wheel. Well, I have got some rubber, but you know what I mean. Hardly any rubber between the wheel and the road. So these 45 profile tires on 255 tires are fantastic. Um, you do feel, I suppose, bumps a little bit more than I did with the standard wheels, which had a 55 profile tire, I believe. 225, 55, 16s, I think is what they were. Um, but uh, it's not really that bad at all. Bearing in mind, it's a big, luxurious car. Now, as I say, uh, when new, this car was £40,000. Yes, £40,000. Um, I paid under 1,500 quid. So less than £1,500 for this car, which is a bargain, an absolute bargain, because the price they're going for now is double that and more. Um, I mean, listen, we're on the dual carriageway now. Gear change is smooth. The ride is delightful. It's just, it glides so nicely. And you would have to pay a lot of money to get that from a modern car, I believe. I mean, this, it just oozes. Hello, luxuriousness. Ooh, overtaken by Renault. Ooh, ignore that, move on. So yes, um, I mean, I'm sitting now at 60 miles an hour at 1,000. 450 revs, which is not bad at all. Uh, the steering wheel is straight, just glides beautifully. No lumps and bumps, it's just amazing. It's, tr it's true, it's relaxing. I mean, I'm, I know I'm raving about it and I know it's my car, but you don't have to spend a huge amount of money to get luxury as long as you search for something that's a little bit older, been well looked after and isn't leaking oil and God knows what everywhere. Now again, being an Audi A8, um, you can expect some parts to be expensive, um, but there are Audi specialists out there. Now bearing in mind though, this Audi A8 had so many variations. It had the 2.8, had the 2.8 Sport, it had the 2.8 um, four-wheel drive Quattro, it had the 3.3, it had the 3.7, they did a 4.2 V8 as well, and then they went into the S8. Um, so they did have quite a few different models. Um, this could be argued as not being the base model, but it's the smallest engine capacity that they do. Um, MPG is around 25, so it's not horrendous. Um, however, the uh, CO2s are 257, which means it's 325 pounds a year in tax. So group 43 insurance, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, but uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's not a lot at all. Um, I mean, I am going to go back down the dual carriageway. Um, once I get through the 40 miles an hour bit, I shall put my foot down and you'll see how it picks up. Um, I think it picks up rather nicely. Again, it's not rapid. It's not going to kick you in the back and throw you down the road. But it does feel smooth, shall we say. So I'm now currently sitting at 40 miles an hour. Um, when we get to the 60 limit, I shall put my foot down and we will cruise up to 70 quite nicely, I hope. Just gonna be quiet for a second. And 60, here we go, ready? So foot down, one, two. Up to five and a half thousand RPM. Oops, slightly, 70. Nice. So yeah, it doesn't take long to get there at all. I'm going to do the other side of the roundabout the same so you can see how quickly it picks up from 20 miles an hour up to 70. 
Again, it's so, I mean, I'm sitting now at 60 miles an hour again, 1,500 revs. Lovely. I mean, what I like about it is you've got a great visibility out of these mirrors, and uh, mirrors. <laughs> so she used to be not a bike. Great visibility out of the windscreen and the mirrors, obviously. Um, it's so quiet and serene in here. As I say, you could easily think you are in a car that's maybe two or three years old. I love how this feels, it oozes quality. So we are now doing 20 miles an hour. Are you ready? And 70. That's not bad. Okay, as I say, it's not a rocket ship and there are a lot faster cars, but it, it gets you there in a glidey, relaxing, subtle way. By the way, doing 70 now. He's off. So let's talk about the likes and dislikes. Well, I like the look. That's the biggest thing. No, I love the look. Now, originally I was looking at the predecessor to this one because I thought it was more boxy and I do like the boxy shape. Um, however, this one is long and sleek. And although it's slightly rounded, it's not as bubble um, shape as the D3. This is the D2 model. Um, I love the look of this. Um, apart from the back lights, that's one dislike. The back lights are a bit blobby. But having said that, it shows its retroness through that. I like the, the long, sleek um, lights in comparison to the modern lights on the Audi. I say the modern one, the D3, the one after this. Um, the current Audi, again, it's a bit blobby. I think it's lost its um, long sleekness. It's just a large car. Um, I love how it, comfortable it is. It's, it's unbelievably comfortable. Um, I love how quiet and smooth it is. Now, usually I want to change the exhaust and I know someone has put um, twin metal exhaust pipes on this, which I do need to change because um, when it's ticking over when it's cold, you can hear them rattle and that is slightly annoying. I can't hear it in here, but you can hear it from the outside. Um, so I will change those. Um, but I won't change the exhaust itself because I don't need a big loud brash exhaust. It's not that kind of car. Uh, you don't need to be doing 100 miles an hour because that would be illegal. So sitting at 60 is absolutely fine. I mean, I'm in this 40 limit and I'm happy doing 40 miles an hour. Bear in mind this road used to be 60. I don't feel as though I want to go faster. I'm quite happy and how relaxed and comfortable it is. Um, okay, something else I don't like. Um, I don't like how the uh, cruise control doesn't seem to work, but I think that's a fuse. I need to look into that again because I'm so busy. I don't get a chance to look into some of the little foibles. Um, I do have um, an ABS module because there is a little intermittent fault with the ABS light coming on. Um, and um, that's only recent. So I bought an ABS module because I've been told that's what it is. Um, I paid 30 quid for a used one um, on eBay and uh, that will be fitted very soon. So uh, that should clear that light up. It doesn't seem to make a difference the way it drives at all. It just seems to be a communication issue with the light. Oh no, I don't like that it doesn't have aircon. How stupid is that? With all these gadgets, it doesn't have aircon, although it does have climate control. It's got econ for economy. Obviously, it's just sort of not aircon. Um, I like the attention it gets. A lot of people stare at it because you don't see many of these D2 models around anymore. They are very comfortable, very rare models now. Um, a lot of them were thrashed up and down the motorway by executives because they were an expensive car. So a lot of them have been 
sort of abused, I would say, but probably well maintained. Um, oh, they're going to let me through. I can't go down there. Thank you. I like the responsiveness. Um, when you put your foot down, being an automatic, you got a little bit of lag. Um, but when you pull away out of a junction, it picks up really quickly, really well. Really pleased with that. Um, I should pull out of this junction down here and you'll see what I mean. But um, I like the way it wafts. It's just oh, effortless. Oh, okay, I'll be there in a minute, kind of attitude. Um, I quite like the brakes. They're not amazing, but they are pretty good. I didn't pull out of there. See what I mean? I don't feel I need to. It's just such a wafty, relaxing, soft car. I don't feel as though I need to thrash it. It's great. Wow, three learners in a row. Goes if it wants to. So yes, there we go. The Audi A8. 2.8, automatic, sport. And that brings me to the end of this episode of Merch of the Masters. Thank you much for joining me. I'll be back next time with something else. I do have a new retro van that I want to show you as well, so that'll be coming up soon. So until next time, please ride and drive carefully, but have fun. Bye-bye.